Welcome to HINS 2018, and I'm here talking to Judy Murphy. And Judy is the Chief Nursing Officer for IBM Global Healthcare. Now, I had the pleasure of sitting in on your session Hi. yesterday, which was health IT's role in patient engagement mm -hmm. for population health management. And he had some really, really good points, I thought, in terms of the whole aspect of patient engagement. You talked about industry prevention and so on. So can you maybe give us some of the highlights of what you see of those keys? Sure, absolutely. So um, the biggest thing that's going on right now is there's this revolution happening in healthcare, really away from an illness model. Uh, an illness not model meaning we only go to the doctor when there's something wrong and when we need something. So if we break a bone or if we have a pain in our stomach, those kinds of things. Um, so we're migrating away from that toward more of a prevention and population health model, where in fact we worry about our health or think about our health all the time. Um, so we try to stay healthy. Uh, we do the preventive things that uh, need to be done, the early diagnosis things like checking for cancer and checking for high blood pressure pressure and diabetes. Um, and it's also a way of putting the ownership really of health on ourselves, on, on the individual citizens to think about health all the time, not just when they go to the doctor. And how, how do you think it's succeeding? How, how, what's the uptake? What, what are the challenges in actually making it happen? Yeah, so changing the biggest the challenge mindset. is changing the mindset. That's exactly right. So we've all sort of grown up thinking about health is outside of us. Health is about that doctor, and we worry about our blood pressure or our blood sugar when we go to the doctor and not in between, almost as if it was the doctor's problem and not our problem. And so changing that is really a culture change where we each start to think about how we live our lives is what health is, not that again, episodic visit to the doctor. So getting that culture change or changing that mindset is a pretty big deal. Now how, just, so here's a question then. How, they use a term here, I don't know if they use it, it was, I've been out of the States for a long time, but they use the term frequent flyers, mm -hmm. you know, frequent mm -hmm. visitors to the hospital, the emergency room, to the GPs. So how do you balance that getting the patient, the consumer, to focus on their health much more day to day and not become a frequent flyer or a hypochondriac sure. or whatever. How does <laughs> how, there's got to be a balance there, perhaps? Yeah. So there, there's tools that we can use um, to help people. And one of the biggest tools I talk about all the time, and I understand it's just beginning here in, in New Zealand, and that's the use of, of portals. Mm -hmm. So uh, health organizations that provide health care, sharing the information that they have with the individual who's receiving the health care. So if it's blood work, or if it's your mammogram result, or your colonoscopy result, or your blood pressures, those are available to the individual on the portal. And I always say with information comes power, right? Once I start to have the information myself, I start to think about that information and maybe even manage it. And so if it's a blood pressure result, maybe I'm going to be encouraged to take my own blood pressure at home in between the visits, mm -hmm. keeping track of it and then telling the doctor about it as compared to just that once a year or once every six months or the frequent flyer visit, having your blood pressure checked then. Mm -hmm. and, and do you see, do you see that culture change happening? I see it happening in different parts of different countries in different ways. Um, so there's, there's movements in certain countries where patients are actually demanding this kind of information um, because maybe they've had cancer and they didn't feel that they had enough control over their own therapies or their own treatment plans. And they feel like, I, I want to take control. I, I own this myself. It's my body. Um, and so there's actually movements um, of, of patients glomming together, if you will, and demanding this of the healthcare organizations. And of course, that goes all the way down the continuum to those that have no idea that it's even important to them. And they still see healthcare as outside of them, and it's about the doctor and not about them individually. And then everything in between. Um, so home visits now, for example, um, a nurse's home visit is starting to incorporate some of these things. You know, a nurse goes into the home, takes the blood pressure, maybe looks at a wound, depending on why she or he is there. But then there's this whole idea of checking the home, right? How is this person managing their medications? 
if they're elderly, do they have walking problems? If they have walking problems, do they have you know, uh, handles on the sides of their toilet? Do they have fixed chairs and not chairs with rollers on them? Do they have scatter rugs around their house? So again, starting to think about those things that individuals can do to prevent, in the elderly, it's always about preventing falls, because if they fall, they break something, and oftentimes it's a hip, and then that's an expensive hospitalization and a long recovery time. I think you mentioned, and I, I, I smiled actually, you said in the States they're giving incentives to people to actually to have a nurse, sort of a visitor come in and have a look around the home and your mother got a certificate for Coles, yeah. right? Yes, I guess so. And I know that's one of my <laughs> sister's favorite, favorite stores. You know, like here in New Zealand they say you, everyone gets a bargain at the warehouse. Well, in the States, everyone gets a bargain at Kohl's. At, at Kohl's. I, thought that was, I, thought, I thought that was quite... Well, and it's less expensive to give that incentive than to have that hospitalization. And that's the whole concept is, you know, typically when we talk about prevention, we usually think about healthy people, you know, eating good and having exercise. But prevention also runs that whole gamut to the, to the elderly and preventing them from getting dementia or preventing them from getting those falls. That's great, Judy. Thank you. And I think you ended your paper by saying the future ain't what it used to be. Yeah, that's a good one, isn't it? <laughs> Healthcare is changing. Healthcare is changing. So thank you very much. Your, your presentation, you've done actually more than one, have you? Um, I was involved in the e-health nursing. Oh, the um, e-health nursing. That's right. So yesterday. all of those will be on the HINS website for, for everybody to, to have a look at the full presentations and the slides. So thanks very much again, Judy. You're most Appreciate welcome. It. Thank you. You got it.